What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we are checking out the Laney GH100 Ti Tony Iommi Signature Amplifier. Let's do it. Hope you guys are doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle and what I do is I take awesome high gain amplifiers, guitars, caps, speakers, pickups, overdrives. I feel like I missed something there. I record them with a simple SM57 setup and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and dudes with completely lackluster guitar chops, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing on your way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. All right, so today we have the Laney GH100Ti. This is a very hard to track down and from what I can gather, pretty rare amplifier from Laney. This is the Tony Iommi signature amplifier that was derived from the rest of the GH series. There's a GH50L, a GH100L, and if I'm not mistaken, there might be one or more two amps from that line. I don't know much about the history or the origins of the Laney GH series, nor do I know much about this amplifier itself. I just know that it's the Tony Iommi signature. It comes from the GH series, which is a high gain Laney amplifier from sometime in the late 80s, early 90s. I honestly didn't really do any research on this amplifier. I just found one for a good deal and picked it up because a lot of people had asked me if I had ever tried it before. So here it is. It sounds pretty cool right off the rip, and we're gonna go ahead and dive into this thing. For that little intro clip, I was using my Balliger Typhon with the Seymour Duncan Distortion Pickup in the bridge. We had the Boss M77 Overdrive on out in front of the Laney. We're gonna turn that off. We are going through a Mesa 412 traditional cab with the stock Vintage 30s, SM57 on the V30. I'm going to go ahead and put all of the EQs back to noon. We're gonna put all of these switches in the up position, which is technically the off position. I'm gonna bring that gain all the way back down to nine o'clock and we're gonna see what this amp is capable of. Right off the bat, I can tell you that this thing has a lot of gain on tap. It also has a lot of low end. Compared to my GH100L that I have owned for a while, this thing has way more low end and more low mids in the circuit. It also has quite a bit more gain and it just seems to be overall a little bit clearer. So it's a pretty cool amp to begin with, but in my opinion, it does have a couple of goofy frequencies that keep it from being a great, more of a modern metal amplifier, but I definitely understand why it works for the person that it works for. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hear this thing. All right, so with everything at noon, it sounds a little bit dead. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna bump that presence and that treble up. With the way that we have this dialed, with the way that these switches are right now, it definitely reminds me of kind of that Black Sabbath tone because it has that distinctive Laney sound signature. It's almost kind of like a, uh, a broken style of gain structure. It's really interesting. It's kind of hard to describe, but it's a little bit fuzzy. There's a little bit of a strange clipping in the top end, but as soon as you hear it, you kind of know that it's an older Laney from that gain structure. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna bump the mids a little bit. We're gonna bump the highs and the treble just a little bit more. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and bump that gain just a little bit. Copyright. But you get the picture. <laughs> it's got kind of that muffled top end thing going on. All 
where it doesn't have a lot of definition. It kind of has this interesting sort of fuzz to it. Definitely doesn't sound classic rock at all. But what happens when we start messing with these switches over here? We have a bass switch and a bright switch. The bass switch affects the bass frequencies. The bright switch affects the top end frequencies. So let's flip that bass switch down. And immediately that kind of brings it into more of a Marshall-y style territory. Uh, the highs are a little bit more forward and the low end is a little bit tighter. What happens when we flip the bright switch? Ugh, I knew that was gonna hurt immediately. This amp is very bright with that bright switch engaged. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that treble and that presence down a good bit. Let's see if we can kind of coax like a little bit of a classic rock type tone out of this with low gain. So yeah, kind of, but it is definitely way more of a nasally mid structure than something like say a classic Marshall where the mids are much more open and forward. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and bump it right into the high gain territory. Let's push that gain up to four. Definitely a lot of top end kind of cat cat and clank to it, which I can't seem to get out of this amplifier. I don't know what speaker this amp was shaped around. I'm gonna guess some sort of a greenback, more than likely, but there's a top end kind of clankiness to it that is really hard to get out of it when you're trying to get more modern tones. And the low end also has a little bit of that vintage sag to it. And it's actually giving my Mesa cab some frequencies that the Mesa cab doesn't like because the cab is almost starting to get a little bit farty and there are not many amps that make these cabinets do that. So just figured that I would, I would point that out. The low end through this particular cab is a little bit ugly, but we're gonna go ahead and turn that gain up even more. still a little bit on the dry side. There is also a resonance switch over here which affects the low end frequencies even more. It kicks in a little bit of a deeper low end frequency but it also makes the amp even louder and even brighter. So unfortunately when I kick it in, the amp almost becomes too bright to be able to tame. So let's kick it in, it's gonna get louder. That is really, really hard on the ears. So let's flip this bright switch off. And a lot of that top end is now gone. So let's go ahead and try to reintroduce it with the treble a little bit. I have found that these switches are either one or the other. It's like you can either have the resonance on or you can have the bright on. And if you want a more vintage tone, turn the resonance on, it gives you a little bit more low end sag, but it also gives you a lot more volume, a lot more brightness. If you turn just the bright switch on, it gives you a lot of top end and tightens the amp up a little bit, but if you have them both on, it is just like treble overkill. And I have found from my personal taste that the bright switch being on is where the amp sounds the best. So we're gonna turn that bright switch back on. We're gonna turn the resonance back off. It just gives the most modern tone. We're gonna readjust the presence and the treble. All right, so we have it somewhat in more of a modern tone again. Let's go ahead and push that gain up to uh, right between six and Really punchy bass frequency, and the amp is now really saturated, so let's go ahead and add a little bit of treble back in because it definitely shaved a lot of the top end off. Notice I haven't adjusted that bass EQ much because as soon as you start to go past noon, the bass starts to get really big and punchy and a certain frequency and it actually kind of doesn't sound all that great. For someone who likes a very punchy, tight low end, this amp kind of has that, but it's, it's almost like it's in the wrong frequencies for what I personally would want. All right, so let's get a little bit more treble on that. So overall, 
overall, we have kind of cool, sludgy, little high gain tone going on. It doesn't have a lot of definition, but it's got some character. Not bad like that. No boost on in front of the amp. And you see on those triplets, it has a very saggy low end. Even though the low end is kind of tight, kind of percussive, there is a little bit of sag when you hit certain notes where it just kind of wants to bloom. It kind of wants to like swell a little bit. We can fix that though with an overdrive. And just like that, we have a thrash tone. But it is a little bit bright and a little bit gainy, so let's pull the gain back a little bit. Let's pull that treble back a little bit. Let's get a little bit more low end on it. So just showing you real quick that a low end can definitely, or a, an overdrive can clean up the low end is what I was trying to say and tighten this amp up pretty significantly. But let's try one more setting. Let's go ahead and pull that middle back and see how this thing sounds with some of the mid scooped out. I'm gonna up the presence and the treble. As you can see, without an overdrive in front, it has a lot of sag. It has, like I said, that gain structure. Things almost sound broken through it. It's got that kind of weird crunchy distortion with a little bit of fuzz to it. It's, it's a very unique thing that I have found to Laney's and some vintage oranges. I have not really experienced that type of gain and that type of tone through any other amps and I feel like it just kind of reminds me of a little bit of a fuzz pedal being on in front of a different amp. That's the easiest way that I can kind of explain it. So with that being said, you guys are here for the thrash metal riffs. So why don't we do that? I'm gonna go ahead and try a different boost. We're gonna try the Boss SD1 with this amp. So even with the Boss SD1 on in front of the amp, it still has a little bit of that sag. When I turn the TS9 on, I notice it has even more of that sag to it because the TS9 doesn't qu cut out quite as many of the low mids. And it does sound good, but I am really struggling with a way to make it sound open without sounding harsh because of where those high frequencies are placed in the signal. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more treble. Let's pull the mids back just a tad. Okay, so the TS9 and the SD1 sound pretty good. What happens if we turn on a more modern overdrive, like say, the Friedman Buxom Boost? Let's get this evened out a little bit. It definitely makes the gain structure more modern. Let's pull the gain back on the amp just a little bit. Let's up that tight knob.
There's a really cool mid thing going on, but it, the top end is just grating to my ears. I can't get that high end frequency out of this amp. As soon as I start trying to turn the treble down too far, the amp just kind of sounds lifeless. It sounds a little bit congested and yet there's still kind of a harsh frequency there. If I try turning the presence down and then trying to recompensate for the loss of uh, treble with the treble control, it still sounds muffled. So it's really hard to strike a balance between the two. Why don't we go ahead and go down into uh, drop C. Maybe those higher frequencies that are annoying in standard tuning sound a little bit better in a drop tuning. All right, so very congested like that. I'm gonna go back to the MXR M77 one more time. So the low mids are just very congested for any sort of modern type of gain. This amp definitely does much better with a Doomy or a Stoner Rock type of vibe in my opinion. If you were to leave this bright switch off and this bass switch off and just kind of go for a little bit more of that fuzzy, kind of warm, broken, overdriven type of vibe, you know, it's the Tony Iommi signature amp. It's not going to be voiced for thrash metal and hardcore, it's voiced for the type of stuff that he does with Black Sabbath. But with that being said, let's try one guitar with active pickups and then call it a day on this amp and see if we can't coax something a little bit more modern out of it. All right guys, I now have my Schecter PT SLS Elite with the Fluff Signature Fishman pickup in it. Let's hear how it sounds with a modern pickup. Nothing else has been changed. Oh, yeah, that's just not not nice sounding. Those high frequencies are really ugly. So uh, that's going to do it for me on this amp today, guys. I couldn't really get a tone that I was in love with out of this thing, to be 100% honest with you. And with that being said, what do you guys think of this amp? What do you guys think about the tones that I was able to get out of it? Have you played one of these before? Did you like it a lot better than I like it? Did you get it to sound better than I got it to sound? Whatever your experience, leave it down below in the comments, and I'll be sure to meet you down there to chat about it. If you want to support what it is that I do here down in the description of this video, all my support links, including my Sweetwater affiliate link, you click on that link, get yourself something nice from the fine folks at Sweetwater. I get a little kickback. It costs you nothing extra and it helps me move forward. Thanks. Or consider adding your name to this list of incredibly fine people by joining my Patreon community and supporting the channel like that. I'll love you forever, whether you want me to or not. And last but not least, if you guys like the video, do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button if you like my style and you don't want to miss any of my future uploads. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another ant. There we go.